And once more, a great day, a great day. is. One more time. A great day, a great day. Is. is. Thank you. <laughs> Period. Period. A great day is. A great day is. A great day is. Did you notice the shift? Yes, yeah, shift happens. Thank you. It happens when you affirm a greater truth. And when you affirm that greater truth, it's a cause to your individual consciousness realigning with universal consciousness, the one, the all-knowing, all-permeating, into the creative aspect of spirit. You get that? So as you say a great day is, the idea of a great day doesn't have an end time. Where? In your mind. If anything is, it is. The statement of truth, God is all there is, affirms right now and forever. It does, it, the statement isn't, God was all there was, or God will be all there will be. Uh-uh. God is all there is. Love is all there is. Truth is. I am. God is all there is. And that God is all there is is creating your experience. And it begins with you. Your experience doesn't begin with me. It doesn't even begin here. In truth, it begins when you shift in your consciousness for you. I can't shift that for you. I can add some inspiration to the motivation to the idea that was maybe lying already dormant within you. But I didn't do it. You have to do it. Shakespeare's famous wonderment. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or take arms against the sea of troubles. And by opposing them in them. To die. To sleep. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say, we end the heartache. And it goes on to say this. To sleep, perchance to dream. Such wisdom. For me, he's telling us, don't place your energies toward a false image of struggle and resistance that the world has for us. How perfect the song today. It's of no real use, that struggle, resistance, false image that's out in the world. Rather, I suggest we all take a breath and allow yourself into what is true for you. Turning inward to the balance mode of spirit, a period of sleep and pause and rest and reflection so that that truth that you are can be heard. You are of divine spirit in magnificent form and I like to say opportunity. You're always in opportunity to create out of yourself. You deserve to create the best, whatever that is for you. Why? Because you can, and you do, and you are. 
because it is. <laughs> Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, writes in the textbook. It's on page 406. Pure spirit exists at the center of all form. Of itself, it is formless, but it is ever giving birth to form. The forms come and go, but it, it, pure spirit, goes on forever. We are some part of it. If pure spirit is at the center of everything and is always responding to our thought, there is no limit to its manifestation, except the limitation that we set. Let me take two statements from Holmes' writing and uh, offer my interpretation. The first, of itself it is formless. I'd like you to image a potter sitting in front of a spinning potter's wheel with this soft, wet, sloppy blob of clay. <laughs> You ever tried to, to do a, uh-huh? <laughs> Boy, is it fun. <laughs> Whoop. James knows I have one little piece that I made in college. <laughs> it looks pretty good, so I've kept it. <laughs> <laughs> and so the soft, wet clay spinning is the creative aspect, and we get to put our fingers into it, don't we? We get to put our ideas into it. We get to put our touch to it, our form, going round and round, creating whatever that is for us. I bet if each of us was given a blob of clay and a spinning wheel, we would each have a different result, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Kind of like our life. And the second statement then, there is no limit to its manifestation for us except the limitations that we set. Spirit never says no. It's a yes person. A yes, I used to call it a yes man, but it's a, I has to be genderless, so a yes it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yes. It's a yes factor of our lives. So this is the story of my personal shift in consciousness most recently. It's the tale of the sale of my home. <laughs> what a process. What a revelation. You know, I've been in this teaching over 30 years, and every so often when I get it big, it's a little thing. I don't have to be smacked or run, you know, run into or backed in. I, sometimes it's something so subtle, and this shift happens. But it's the perfect trigger for my awareness. Well, my home was listed in October of 2017, several months. And the first listing ran out. Second, second relisting comes around. No activity. No activity. Well, I had an open house planned one Saturday, 12 to 2. My partner James and I were sitting in my living room with a glass of adult beverage <laughs> Friday night, <laughs> looking around, and I asked the question, could you live here in this home? Because it was not his home. And he said, yeah. I said, yeah? Are you sure? He said, yeah. I said, well, you know, I could too, actually. So we began imaging. We began imaging all of the ideas that we, you know, if we lived here, what would we do? And the creative process, the juices were, it was really good. <laughs> and then, ah, oh, it was great. Slept well, got up. Made the house like no one lived there. <laughs> You've sold a home, you know. No one lives here. 
So off we go at 11 o'clock, and I get a phone call at 12.30, Saturday. I have an offer. I said, oh, well, okay, um, you know, I'm busy. I'm going to speak in, in church. And so I, I, I have Monday off. And she says, no, today. We have to do this today. Ten-day escrow is what they want. <laughs> so so I, um, I said, okay, what time do you want to see me? <sighs> okay. So got there, 4.30, left the office with the counter and all those, all those details. I get a call at 8.30 that night. It's an escrow. Thank you, Connie. <laughs> it was your cork in the stop. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> what, what happened was I was okay, comfortable, grateful for where I was at that time, at the moment. I didn't need to push it. I didn't need to keep anything. It was just oh, the breath. It was the breath. I just was o totally okay with it, all of it. So to me, that big shift in my consciousness, and for I think in general terms, is one of agreement. I was in total alignment with the idea that whatever I am and wherever I am in my life is the right and perfect place. Wherever I am is the right and perfect. Let's say that. Wherever I am <laughs> is the right and perfect place. And that included the home I had lived in for 25 years. Even though I thought I had to get rid of it, I was pushing, 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 pushing. I went, oh, well, you know, I teach this stuff. But, you know, sometimes you're so close to your stuff that the stuff you're teaching has to kind of take a little back way in. What I also know is I was in my right mind for this shift to happen. That's the mind of God. As one with the creative law of spirit. And as a result, that doorway opened wide for me to move into the next gift of my life. You and I are always at one with the spirit of God, the divine wholeness. And I talked about that in a previous lesson, the divine wholeness that we are. And we're pouring ourself, our individual consciousness self, our worthiness, into this creative medium and it outpictures for us that sense of self, of who we are today. And this, this is the evidence right here today. My story, your story, the result, the demonstration of our entire lives. All right here, boom. This is. Right now is the gift you've been believing into, expressing from, and all you've ever thought into your life up to this moment. And what I've come to know is that your real belief about you is the gift that keeps on giving, whatever that is. Ernest Holmes tells us in his book, Creative Mind and Success, and I quote, let us, see that let us see that we use the right attitude of mind in all we do. Filling ourselves with such courage and power of, of strength that all thought of weakness flees before us. End quote. So, as I approach the uh, end of my lesson today, I want to share the affirmation with you one more time that practitioner John Boyle so beautifully penned. And this is it Letting go of thoughts and beliefs that bind me. I am free to create 
the life I desire. The gift of spirit, my beloveds, is when you shift in consciousness. And we do, we do that by releasing the fear and by embracing a greater faith in spirit as the source, your source, my source, the one source of all of creation and all of life. Beloved, I urge you to end the heartaches of your life and live your dreams. Live your dreams, not now when. Create the best life you can. It's your experience. And remember, a great day is. A great life is. Know you're loved. Namaste. And so it is. <laughs> Time for the offertory. Offertory. Yeah, well, after, after, yeah. Warren? You're up. I was so complete. <laughs> <laughs>